The hardest collectible in Celeste's base game is the Farewell Golden Berry, which requires you to beat the final chapter of the game without dying a single time. There is however one special thing about this Golden Berry that makes it unique, aside from the difficulty of course, which is that the Golden does not end on the final room of the map. After you complete the final room, you think you finally finished the run and got the Golden Berry, and then... <laughs> An extra room, you have never seen before, that you have to beat in one try to collect the golden. While the room itself is pretty easy and meant to be sight readable, dying here means being sent back to the side of the map and failing the run. It's very easy to choke with nerves, and as a YouTube comment described, the music just adds stress to the situation. You only encounter this room if you have the golden video, so it's called the golden room. And of course the Celeste modding community has also picked this idea up, with the ones we will be talking about using either teleport triggers set to activate only with the golden, or golden blocks, an unused entity that only appear with the golden. We will be discussing the different forms that these rooms can have in maps, and also my opinions on them. So let's get right into it. There's a pretty big variety in terms of what mappers decide to do with their golden rooms. Firstly are the sight-readable easy golden rooms, staying true to the purpose of the original one, and of course because of that, these are the most common. Since the first golden berry was in Farewell, similar and harder ones are in other versions of the map, like Farewell B-side, Everlasting Farewell, Farewell CC sides, and many many others. But it's pretty boring to discuss those since all of them are very similar to the original, just harder gameplay, so I won't go into detail. It is worth mentioning though that Everlasting Farewell actually has multiple golden rooms, and the golden detaches at the start of each to let you practice the room while also being able to die without risk. And then you can go do the room with the golden once you feel ready. Final goodbye, or 90 for short, is a really really long. It's so long to where there are 16 separate goldens just for doing each segment deathless, and then a platinum berry for the entire map deathless, which is over 2 hours. We'll talk about the platinum rooms later on in the video, so stay tuned for that, but let's just focus on the golden rooms right now. If you do the final segment golden, you get teleported to a golden room pretty similar to Everlasting Farewell, in the sense of having multiple golden rooms and the golden detaches are need for practice. The difference is that these rooms are of much higher quality and more diverse in their design. The section by itself is really long, being multiple minutes with tens of rooms, starting with mostly horizontal closed gameplay to more open gameplay near the end. Each room is consistent and well designed, with the golden rooms ending at the height here, and it's a nice conclusion to the final segment golden, and even better as we'll discuss with the platinum rooms later. Calypta is a map that seemingly does not have a golden room. Any one of it that gets the regular golden does not have a golden room, right? Well, actually if you do the full clear golden, which involves getting every single collectible on the way, then... You have a full clear specific golden room. Solaris, a map by Donker, takes this idea further. The map focuses on juggling multiple jellies, and so the normal golden room is just a simple jelly we grab, and that's it. It was not necessary to add this room, and it's way too jokeable, and I don't really like it much. But the real genius comes in during 2022, when Paradash was going for the full clear golden on stream, and Donker pushed out a sneaky little update that added an FC golden room. So, uh... What? Donker? 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 What did you do? Donker! Donker! You can't do this to me! You can't do this to me! Actually, because of this, Donker has kind of now gotten a reputation of making very interesting golden rooms. With the Solaris system update adding a few new maps to the Solaris campaign, we got a few more of them. Lunaris the Dark Side has a normal golden room which simply references the original Solaris golden room. But the real meat of it is the full clear golden room, which requires you to solve an entire elaborate puzzle, requiring you to even go inside of the files of the map and find clues from there. Oh you fucker! Oh my god! It doesn't end! Bro! I can't emphasize just how cool this is, and how much effort had to be put into this thing that basically a single digit number of people will even encounter in game, even if it's a bit weird for what's supposed to be a golden room. Sight readable golden rooms in general can be a fun challenge to add for goldeners to test the nerve control and reading skills, but it can also be very frustrating if you die to one of these golden rooms, and it might almost feel unfair if that happens, especially if the golden room is just poorly designed. Most CPVL is a very well designed map, but the same cannot be said for the golden room. The first part is just a simple demo dash, but the problem is with the next part. 
See, you can easily collect the height, but there is an invisible golden detach trigger here, which you have to precisely jump over. Keyword, invisible. So it's not very obvious what to do here, and kinda unfair. And I mean, two people didn't get the golden because of this. The first died in it, and the second didn't know what to do and just collected the height without the golden. Thankfully an update to the map made all of the spikes here fake, so you can't die to this room, but I still don't like it. It happens often that super easy golden rooms can also just make the ending of a run less climactic than if it just ended where the map should end. Final rooms of maps usually are the most intense, so to follow that up with an easy room with music that is basically just taunting you, like the one in Solaris is, an interesting choice. The best example I can give of a golden room straight up not working is Monica's Summer D-Side, one of the most popular maps ever and by far the most popular modded golden. A few months after the map was first golden, it got an update which added a golden room. The golden room is really bad. It adds an entire 2 minutes of very questionable gameplay which is way too long. It also ruined the hype and impact of the original ending of the map. It was very unnecessary and even worse with it being an update to the map, so it was removed shortly after some backlash. Then there is Dark Moon Ruins, one of the most well received mods in the game, which had an epic conclusion with generally one of the best songs I've ever heard in my life. But with the golden, uh... I don't really understand the point of it, why was this necessary? Also, many people don't enjoy reading a room under extreme pressure, and so they just practice the golden room beforehand. This is done through tools such as debug mode, and this is also what the majority of goldeners do. The thing is, pre-practicing a golden room basically turns it into another regular room. I know it's their choice to do this, but you can make an argument on why it's a bit lame. It's very rare nowadays for someone to get to a golden room, having never known that there was one in the map in the first place. But also to be fair, you can't really be sure about whether a given golden room is even sight readable or not if you haven't seen it, because of the second type of golden room. So far we have only talked about the sight readable ones, true to the nature of the original farewell golden room. But now this takes us to the second type of golden rooms, which are the ones that actually require practice beforehand to have a chance of doing them. Either the golden room is unreadable or way too difficult to do on a first attempt to blind. Avian Ascension is one of the hardest Celeste mods to clear, with the gameplay and decoration both heavily inspired from another map, D1D7, specifically the third room of 2500 meters in that map. So the Golden Berry in Avian Ascension teleports you right at the end into the middle of a slightly nerfed version of that D1D7 room. It only lasts a few seconds, but it's a nice throwback to the inspiration of the map. This 2 frame timing might be a bit awkward, especially at the end of a run with nerves, but to be fair, this golden room also skips the original height collect, which is hard in and of itself. Since there is no chance of being able to sight read this, it goes into this category. Okay, so remember the golden rooms in Final Goodbye? Well, if you get the Platinum Berry, which is a 2 hour deathless challenge and would be the hardest achievement ever, then you still have to do the golden rooms, but they are tinted grey, and that just gives an entirely new vibes to the room like a sense of finality, which I love. And also along with the golden rooms, after you get to the height which is now fake, you have to do the platinum room, which you are intended to pre-practice, with each section being a callback to a previous D-side. A deathless challenge of this length needs to have a final room that feels like a finale, and this definitely accomplishes that. I love the way it concludes the journey the entire map takes you on, and with the added nostalgia from the callbacks at the end. With how high the stakes are and all, it's an amazing ending to the run. Speaking of Final Goodbye, remember the old version of the map, the much lower quality version of the map which still had the golden for the entire map deathless? Well, it had quite possibly the worst golden room in any map ever, with it using a teal crystal along with extremely jank and bad gameplay for nearly 10 minutes. And it also just feels completely unrelated and disconnected to the rest of the map. Now I probably should not be too harsh on this considering it's very obviously a joke golden room. It wasn't really made with the intent that anyone would ever do this golden, which you can tell by these overly precise jumps at the end of the golden rooms. And it's more of a practical joke than anything, so yeah. And of course the ones in the newer version of the map are amazing. 70 with single dash or 71D is a heavily modified and buffed version of Monica 70, which we looked at earlier in the video. The map doesn't even include the cassette room that 70 has, so on a regular clear you basically just reach the summit and that's it. But as the map states, maybe you'll get more if you bring a shiny to this place. Okay then, so if you do manage to bring the golden to the end, you get to go up and have to do the golden room of this map, which is flag 21 from the map 4 times in a row with a different wind pattern each time. It's very iconic now and also has its own name, 
It almost does not feel like a golden room, but more of an extra challenge added to the golden. Which, now that I say it, sounds like the same thing which it is, but it has a very different vibe to it. Assuming you have pre-practiced these rooms beforehand, these can be really fun and iconic sections of the map. But if you somehow manage to not get spoiled for the golden rooms, you are basically dead. While this would probably never happen, it is worth mentioning. But sometimes you are meant to die in golden rooms. OpenSea is a really short map, being only 1 minute of length. It has a silver instead of a golden since it's a map from a collab, but it has the same functionality as a golden. The silver just adds an entire bonus room past the final one, almost doubling the length of the map. Unlike the previous rooms we just discussed, you are basically guaranteed to die here a few times, with how it only takes a minute to get here, which is pretty interesting. You usually never see golden rooms in maps destroyed, or I mean, uh, silver rooms. And similar to 71D, it's more meant as an extra challenge to do along with the silver, though it's pretty different here, with it basically doubling the map's length, and basically being guaranteed to die here a few times, unlike 71D where the stakes are much higher. Solaris Golden Room again references Solaris just like Lunaris, wow that rhymed. But then for the full clear one, um, you basically meet this guy named Jash who needs his map playtested, and then you tell him his map is trash, and then uh... You enter an Undertale type boss fight here, it actually does get pretty high towards the end, this portion of the map is much longer than everything else. Unlike the previous golden rooms, you're still meant to sight read this but also expect to die a few times in the process. I thought this part of the map was kind of funny. Of course not all of these types of golden rooms are good, and just like the sight readable golden rooms, many of these that we discussed do feel super unnecessary. Like take this one in Shatter Sight, one of the scarier Celeste maps, focusing on dashless gameplay. It's pretty funny, and the intended route straight up includes an unset up ceiling pop in the middle of the room, which is a one frame trick. I don't understand why this map even has a golden room, but it's funny so uh, yeah. However, as fun as little extra challenges for people to decide to golden the map, readable or not, it can also be nice to just have a little congratulations for anyone that goldens their map, or even just acknowledging the achievement within the map itself. Sapphire Dash is one of my favorite golden rooms. You're forced to go up here and have Star Sapphire, the main character of the map, say some stuff to you. It's a nice, cute, and unique way to reward the player's achievement for getting the golden berry, as if it's a canon part of the map's story. Superfector's golden room avoids you with a gallery of some memes and messages relating to the group of people that made the map. Some of them are pretty funny, which I'll show on screen, and it's a fun reward to give for goldening the map. Ifumigon's Summer D site has a fully optional golden room. You can collect any of these heights and you'll get the golden, but if you manage to bounce and dodge dashing into them, you get to unlock an extra checkpoint in the map that just includes all the screens Ivy made when first mapping. And it's a checkpoint, so you can return here whenever you want. I like how there's absolutely zero risk in trying to get up here and I found that to be somewhat unique and... Oh, it got removed. I see how it is. Fennec Forest is a short input dense spring map that includes a golden room simply comprising of fish excavation for a bit until you find the height. The original version of the map actually had spikes, which made it possible to die, but it's been updated since then, and it's a pretty trolly way to end off a golden run. Speaking of those, trolls or fakeouts as golden rooms can be pretty fun, such as Ember's Utopia. I hope it escapes someone a heart attack. Fakeout deaths can be pretty funny, especially when executed well, like take this one in the Leviathan's Rush Plus. What the fuck? You pranked me, Leviathan. This is very funny. You can also have fakeouts such as the one in another Feral Maps B-Side, being one of my favorites. It literally throws an electricity wall bounce at you, which uh, is not even a thing at all. In reality, the electricity just had invisible tiles over it, making it safe to touch. I just love the execution of it, with the animation that supposedly tells you what to do, and you just stare at it with blank-faced confusion. There can also be golden rooms like the seaside of the same campaign, which has the final room end early only for this to happen. She's upset, she's going off about something that you said Cause she doesn't get your humor like I do I'm in the room, it's a 
typical Tuesday night. I'm listening to the kind of music that Golden Rooms were a mistake. So in all, Golden Rooms that simply congratulate the player's achievement are probably my favorite ones. They show that a map cares for the people that spend hours to do their map deathless and can also be fun in general. No risk of losing all your progress as is with the other types of golden rooms. There's one more form of this, which is simply just tinting the final room golden if you have to bury. It's a nice touch and I've done it in my own map too. I think it works well here with the gimmick of the map. It's also done in the final don't joke section of most LXVI, with that map also including this jump scare at the end, and I hope this gave someone a heart attack. Anyways, one final thing I want to say about golden rooms is that you technically can have golden rooms in the middle of the map in some way, or at least just golden exclusive things. I don't really know of any maps that do this, but it would be cool to, for example, have an extra room only accessible with the golden to skip a death warp. I don't know. So there are three things I want to say in this section. Firstly, even after I've talked at length about golden rooms, it's almost always best for a map to just not have an extra golden room at all. Basically 99% of Celeste maps don't have a golden room, which is perfectly fine, as not having one is the safest and usually the best choice. Golden rooms can feel unnecessary, and a bad golden room can ruin the conclusion of a run. But it also depends on the map, as sometimes golden rooms are actually a good thing. Like to take an example, in Final Goodbye it makes perfect sense to have an entire 10 minutes of golden slash platinum rooms, with a 2 hour runtime of the map just to find a special conclusion. The rooms are all well designed and well thought out and as also being a farewell map makes sense to have these rooms. On the other hand, however, some golden rooms can feel like they just exist for the sake of existing. These rooms sometimes don't really justify why they exist, and can make the conclusion of the run anticlimactic, as if it's a joke. I mean, it's kind of hard to take a golden run seriously when it's intense gameplay for 10 minutes just to have wave-pbt playing in the background for the ending. To take another example, the Strawberry Jam Grandmaster Hide site already has an epic conclusion in the final few seconds of the map, with the music and all, and so it definitely should not have a golden room, as that would heavily detract from this ending. And yeah, it doesn't have one, which is the best choice in this case. So what I'm getting at here is that in most maps, golden rooms are kind of just unnecessary. It's usually better to have a map just end the same way a clear would, but again it depends on the map as I stated. Secondly, I don't know if it's just me, or I'm just bored of golden rooms being gold tinted. I know, it sounds weird, but it really makes all of them look the exact same. It's happened to me a few times I debug into a golden room for the sake of getting footage for this video, without changing my color grade to gold, and realize it just looks better without the golden tint. And this applies to a lot of golden rooms. It's partly what can make a lot of the non-gold gold golden rooms feel so special like the 90 Platinum Rooms, 71D, OpenSea, and many others. And thirdly, Golden Rooms are an idea introduced in Farewell, and purely because of that, they're significantly more common in maps. You often hear the term Final Room Syndrome, referring to mappers making the map's final room significantly harder than the rest. Just because that's also what the case is in Farewell. And you can say the same applies to Golden Rooms, as they exist only because Farewell has one, and just like the Final Room Syndrome, are usually not a good thing. I've honestly always wondered whether golden rooms would really be a thing as much if Farewell didn't have one. I mean, sure, someone would eventually come up with the concept, but would it even have been ethically acceptable to do that? Anyways, please give your thoughts or feedback in the comments, and maybe even watch this video about the history of Celeste's most infamous mod. Bye!